Ad maiorem Dei Gloria, to the greater glory of God. In the name of God, Amen. I, Bernard von Lohn, M.A., Ph.D. Diploma in Education, have recounted the story of which I have been a living witness for full 40 years. If I have erred in the telling, or if this story is untimely, I crave the indulgence of God, mighty and merciful, for I have done this in total good faith. Yaoundé Friday, 18 February, 1983. Paul Bibe Bara Vedukov was born on 22nd January 1931, 17 days after I entered school. His life has been extraordinary in many ways, but his interest to any inquirer depends mainly on two considerations. The light which his career throws on the inscrutable ways of God and on how early frustrations can soar to success unsought. He belongs to that class of eminent ecclesiastics who have combined high scholarship with distinguished administrative ability. As it was, born before the middle of this century of unlettered parents in an atmosphere hostile to Christianity, growing up in a period where the chances of schooling were few and far between, and at a time when priesthood in Cameroon was considered the preserve of the white man, he yet, by a strange concatenation of circumstances, rose to the princely rank of clerical learning, combined with innate and profound humility. Completely fluent in five languages, he is at home in England, France, Italy, the Vatican, as he is in his native soul. Had he lived in the Middle Ages, he would most likely have been a Francis, an Aquinas, and an innocent merged in one, the mystic, the philosopher, the administrator. However, my concern here is with his outer history in the hope to have thereby a glimpse of his inner history. And I am glad to do this, having been from his infancy an eyewitness. I knew him as a kindergarten taught. I taught him in Standard 3. I heard of the death of his father when I was a kid. I knew his mother very well. We have been like blood brothers since her death in 1945. By chance, I revived his interest in the priesthood in January 1951, and when dark clouds lured over my vocation, and it seemed dead certain from 1952 that I would go, my main concern became to make him to stay. So I began giving him hints in poetry about the glorying situation, and when clouds broke in December 1953, he was well prepared and stayed on. He was then a seminarian in St. Joseph's College, Sase, from which he emerged with flying colors in 1955. He then proceeded to Bigat Memorial Seminary, where he studied philosophy till October 1957. Then he went to the Propaganda Fidei College in Rome, was ordained in 1961, and stayed on to win the STL in 1962. From October, he transferred to the prestigious Jesuit Gregorian University from which he won a licentiate in sociology in June 1965 and came back home and took up parish work concurrent with research and served in Thico, Fiango, Victoria, now Limbe, until October 1967 when he returned to the Gregorian. Armed as a philosophier doctor, he returned to Cameroon in March 1965. In June of the same year, he became editor of the Cameroon Panorama, and by his stirring and poignant editorials, gave that local paper international dimensions. Then all of a sudden, he was consecrated bishop of the new diocese of Bamenda, and in April this year, 1982, he was raised to the rank of Archbishop of Bamenda. This, in brief, is the outline of the story of the last and only surviving son of Ma Francisca Vigneux. Francisca Vigneux, the daughter of Fine Zenzev, the first of three sisters, two of whom are still alive, 
at this moment of recording, Julia Yuri and Josepha Bonnier, the story of the only son of Paul Barra, son of the princely Fai Wine Surrey, right down in Kumbok Town. Simple story simply told? No, a complicated story which demonstrates at every step the inscrutable ways of God. Bernard Fondon, Bala Yaoundé, Saturday, 4th September 1982. Thank you.